Hi all, my name is Sean Buchanan, a project geologist here at Sequent. In this short video, I'll be walking you through how to import data from Open Ground into Leapfrog Works. Within Leapfrog Works, I'll start by right-clicking on my borehole data folder within my project tree and selecting Import Boreholes via Open Ground. Leapfrog will tell me to check my browser and authenticate my session, and this will have me sign in through Bentley. Back in Leapfrog, I'll then need to choose the cloud instance to connect to. Once connected, this will bring up a list of your projects. From here, I can search for the project in the search bar, or I can organize the table by clicking on the table headers and finding my project. Once you find your project, click on it and select next in the bottom right-hand corner. Now we can choose the data tables that we want to import. Leafrog will automatically find your location details and place it in your collar file. Then moving down, we have our survey file, which is optional in Leafrog Works. If all of your borings are vertical, Leafrog Works does not require a survey file. Then we can grab our tables. So in this case, I will select my field descriptions. We're going to import this as an interval, and the row count is 154. You don't need to import all of your data, only what's going to be used in your Leapfrog model. We'll choose our backfill details. And as far as in situ tests, we'll grab our environmental data. We also notice here the icon next to this environmental data is a bunch of points. So Leapfrog has identified this as a point file. So instead of importing as an interval, I will select point. Then select import. Now we need to classify this data correctly, and this is going to be the same step uh, for importing borehole data from any source within Leapfrog. So here we can go ahead and classify our location type as a category. Some of this stuff is going to be classified automatically by Leapfrog, so final depth, ground level, northing, and easting has been identified correctly already. And maybe my drilling phase will bring in as a category. Select Next. Moving us to our field geological descriptions table. I will import our USCS classifications as lithology and maybe our description component also as a category. Select next. Moving on to our backfill detail. So we have some environmental wells in here and we can bring in the legend codes of kind of those well constructions. And then finally our environmental data. So this is our PID measurements, and we have our concentration or detections we'll bring in as numeric values and press finish. We'll see this data populate in our borehole data folder. So now we can pull in our collar file into the 3D scene to understand the, um, the locations of our drilling data. We can pull in our backfill details and turn on the legend. or pull in our drilling data. So here's our USCS classifications shown here. If you forgot to import uh, some data during this initial upload, uh, it's not a problem. We can go back in and import additional data. So right click on your boreholes folder, select import from open ground and choose the data type you wanna bring in. So I forgot to bring in my well screens. So I'll choose screens. and choose that table that you would like to bring in. So monitoring installation and pipe work. And then we'll classify the data that we want to bring in. So my interval data has been found, our slotted screens. I'll bring in the diameter as a category. And then these are nested screens. So I'll bring in the actual screen name as a category as well. And press finish. And we'll see that populate in our borehole data folder. So here I can pull in my well screen diameters, one inch and two inch wells, or I can flick over the view to our well name. And there we have it. Thanks for watching.